What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. There's a bomb out there, and I want it back. This is a priority one red alert. A bunch of women with a lethal warhead. Just look at all the damage they can do with one credit card. I tried to make this video this morning, but it um, I put my big goofy thumb over the uh, microphone hole on the phone. And so I wasn't able to get the audio clearly. So the brain trust put his thumb over the microphone. And now he is about to tell us that all of the world's geophysicists are wrong about human-caused climate change. Nut? But what I wanted to talk about here is I did some research. I wanted to know... That's right. He did some research. You know, the kind of research that everybody on the internet, when they say, I did some research, that kind of research. That is... He didn't do any research. The the, pers uh, the beginnings of the theory of global warming. There is no such thing as global warming theory. People who do their research, I mean, really do the research, no, there is no such thing as global warming theory. People who do their research, they call it physics. That is, physics. Physics is the theory behind human-caused climate change and global warming. Researchers would know this. How did that happen? I, I, one, I'm curious to know, how did it happen that we got to the point where we are today where so many people are utterly convinced? Yes, all of the world's geophysicists are utterly convinced that human-caused climate change has happened, is happening, and will continue to happen. How that happened? It's called evidence. Despite any scientific evidence to the contrary that we have a climate change crisis on our hands. Human-caused climate change has already been a major disaster for not only humans, but for several other species. We see it happening. It is currently happening. Every scientist out there that works in the related science venues knows it's happening. They agree it's happening. They agree on why it's happening. There's no contention. There's no debate among all of the world's geophysicists regarding the fact that Earth is currently warming due to human beings. <clears throat> and so I, I looked up the who's the father of global warming. The father of global warming is humanity. This is a demonstrable fact. And I came up with a guy. His name is Arthur Ravel, I believe. That's right, good old Arthur Ravel. That is Commander Ravel to you. United States Navy, he pointed out correctly that when people burn shit, it releases carbon dioxide. Approximately half of that carbon dioxide goes into the world's oceans, makes the world's oceans less base and therefore more acidic. This is a major problem, i.e. crisis. He pointed this out in 1957 and a couple of years earlier when he gave a speech in front of the United States Congress explaining what the problem is and is really serious and we have to do something about it. Of course, Congress has done jack shit. But saying that Roger Ravel is the father of human caused climate change, that just fucking cracks me up. <laughs> hey, Roger, stop burning all that shit! I don't get it either. In specific, man-made CO2. Probably because back in the 50s they were seeing so much smog in the air and they thought that somehow maybe the, the greenhouse gases that humans emit don't absorb somehow. They pointed out those facts 100 years after human-caused climate change was known to be a problem. More on that later in this video. They did determine, and it is true that 
<clears throat> for whatever reason. For whatever reason. Great research you did there, guy. It's called, the reason is called physics. Man-made isotopes of carbon mixed with oxygen, carbon dioxide, do not absorb into the ocean as quickly as natural occurring isotopes of carbon and oxygen mixed together or carbon dioxide. Uh, no. Isotopes doesn't matter except when you're determining where the source of that carbon in carbon dioxide atmospheric wise came from. Regarding the ocean? It doesn't give a shit if that carbon dioxide came from burning fossil fuels or burning wood. Chemically identical, except for isotopes, ocean doesn't care. Uptake is still the same. Approximately 55% of it goes into the ocean. The rest stays in the atmosphere. And it's constantly swapping carbon dioxide between the ocean and the atmosphere. It is currently out of equilibrium because humans have been burning shit. If humans stop burning shit, eventually the ocean and the atmosphere, chemically, specifically carbon dioxide and other elements, will reach equilibrium. It has not and it will not for approximately 800 years. So the isotopes, let's say from um, exhalation or decomposition of matter or things like that, um, absorb easily into the ocean, however... Uh, no. Carbon sources doesn't matter when it comes to being taken into the ocean and reused again. Same chemistry, same rate, same speed, same processes, it doesn't matter if it's fossil fuels or burning wood or leaves. The title of this clown's video was, and I quote, On the Origins of Global Warming, end of quote. But he started 120 years after the origins of the science behind human-caused climate change. What the fuck does Ravel and Seuss have to do with the origin of human-caused climate change, i.e. global warming? I suspect he's never actually going to get there in his video. So I will have to do it for him. Carbon from fossil fuels specifically does not seem to absorb into ocean water very well it has to be literally no geophysicist out there agrees with this guy but he did research it's gonna we're gonna suffocate under it more or less it's gonna create a, a bubble effect and it's just gonna get hotter and hotter and hotter and before you know it it's gonna be like the surface of Venus down here I removed some of this clown's, I'm sorry, this genius's video because he stated a falsehood and then went with it, none of which was true, and then he concluded incorrectly and with no evidence that Roger Ravel and Dr. Seuss had determined that Earth might become just like Venus. No, they did not. There's no geophysicists out there. Who has ever said Earth is ever going to be like Venus? That did not happen. Earth's oceans are taking in a shitload of carbon dioxide produced by human beings burning fossil fuels by approximately 55%. No scientist out there thinks Earth is going to get as warm as Venus. Why did this clown say what no scientist out there has ever said after he claimed he did research? And I could see that. You know, I, I, I literally can see the logic of that. I don't see the logic in that. This clown made shit up and now he's saying, oh, I can see that. No. No deal physicists out there, certainly not Ravel and Seuss, said what this clown says they said. But hey, he can see the logic in that. What the fuck does this have to do with the origins of global warming? I will watch the rest of the video 
I have not seen it yet. If he never gets to that point, then I won't show any more of his video. And I will explain to everybody out there and this genius what the origins of global warming actually were. Let's go see, or I'll go see. If you're interested, go look at his video. But So I watched the rest of this video. I should say I listened to it. Almost nothing that he said in that video is true. Also, absolutely nothing in that video has anything to do with the origin of what he calls global warming, i.e. climate change. Roger Revell and Dr. Seuss came along at least 120 years after the science behind human-caused climate change was a thing. When scientists started to be worried about human-caused climate change, the Ottoman Empire was still a thing. President Lincoln was still alive when scientists were talking about human-caused climate change and the burning of fossil fuels and wood and other shit was warming planet Earth. Way back in the mid-1800s, scientists were worried about that. They were saying, hey, this might be a problem. How is Roger Revelle, 120 years later, in any way, the origin of global warming. Quote, It is certain that climate itself has in many instances been gradually changed and ameliorated or deteriorated by human action. The draining of swamps and the clearing of forests perceptibly affect the evaporation from the earth and, of course, the mean quantity of moisture suspended in the air. The same causes modify the electrical condition of the atmosphere and the power of the surface to reflect, absorb, and radiate rays of the sun and consequently influence the distribution of light and heat and the force and direction of the winds. End of quote. September 30th, 1847. George Perkins Marsh. This is the guy who designed the Washington Mar Monument. This is the guy who founded and guided the Smithsonian Institute. He is already saying in 1847, hey, human behavior, we're causing sunlight to change. We're causing Earth's uh, reflective ability to change that um, sunlight. Uh, Human behavior is keeping some of that energy in. It's not radiating back out. He also knew about the urban heat effect. Quote, Within narrow limits, too, domestic fires and artificial structures create and diffuse increased warmth to the extent that may affect vegetation. The mean temperature of London is a degree or two higher than that of the surrounding county. And Pallas, in ancient Rome, believed that the climate of even so thinly a peopled country as Russia was sensibly modified by similar clauses. End of quote. Urban heat effect, known to be, or suspected to be, a problem in 1847. Where does Roger Ravel fit in with all that? If you're going to discuss the origin of, I'm going to do air quotes, global warming, i.e. human-caused climate change, you have to go back to at least the year 1812, when it started being noticed as a problem. It has absolutely nothing to do with this. what this clown says. Oh, that started in California with Roger Revell because he wanted money. That is this clown's claim. If you don't believe me, go watch his video. <sighs> but gosh, he did research. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.